April. I'm yeah, going to full up alive from my place and thank you very much. Yo, I big up every single body where I check in. Every single body where I log in for life, I big up on myself. Happy lockdown day. You understand? Big up to everybody where lockdown and now have nothing for do. Big up the people that have something for do. I know nobody know what they do. I don't hide them, I do. Kaya do, you know, supposed to do. Big up on yourself. Zane, people, to the first day of the lockdown, I'm here to them. Say, everybody, for stay inside. I'm not really inside. People are at me there. But I mean, one day, people are at. Couple people, well, there are people are And them sitting there. My belly can't come over here because food, I can't go and look. But, been the plan for our life today. But since I'm not there, I'm here. I don't want to do it same way or not. You understand with everything we are going on. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm going to set and give myself some air conditioning. And this thing here. Here we are going. First of all, I'm going to say a special big ups to the athletes. Them. You understand? Big up all of the Jamaican athletes. Them. You understand? I said the one of them there at the World Juniors. We are doing the damn thing. Big up the one of them there at Diamond League. Ladies, them are Diamond League. We are doing the thing. Big up on yourself, you understand? On our way, the Jamaica flag proud and a shine as true ambassadors to that something. You understand? Me, I said enough people are pre holy part negative things are going on in Jamaica right you now, but only just give you a sense of hope, a sense of knowing that it's possible for things to get better and things will get better. You understand me? I say, and we love enough for that and respect enough for that. You understand? Despite whatever anybody else might say, me proud for being a Jamaican. With every, all the hardship I go on, I'm proud to be a Jamaican. With all of the negative things that people have said and I do, I'm still proud to be a Jamaican. You understand? Sometimes it burns my heart. Burn my heart. The conditions that we have to endure in other country, but at the end of the day, I still would not. I don't feel like I would be the same. Well, first of all, I don't think I could have comfortable for no one say. I am not a Jamaican. You understand me? I say everybody is like being a Jamaican gives such a sense of pride. Make you feel like say you are a part of something that is much bigger than yourself. You understand? Knowing that you are from this little island in the sun. That little rock here in the sun. Hold on. JR! JR! Go inside. Go inside. Zin, for no one say you are up. You come from the little island under the sun. You understand me? I say enough people want to be Jamaican. Enough people fear to be Jamaican. Enough people sit and take with mannerisms and try to make it their own. But if you're not born from the little rock, yeah, if you never born from this little rock, yeah, you know the middle of the Caribbean Sea, if you never born as a part of the Greater Antilles, if you weren't here or you are not, you don't have ancestors like Taki and Nanny and Paul Bogle and Samuel Sharp and anything. If you do grow up I have the little birthmark right here so you get right as if you don't have this right here so oh sorry you're not authentic I am so sorry you understand me I say I am so sorry if I have different type of Jamaican too you know you have the hardcore Jamaican you have the filtered Jamaican the hardcore Jamaican and the Jamaican I used to name the pink milk and the school bulla whether you did like it or not you had to taste it if the hardcore, real, authentic Jamaica, you name the pink milk and the bulla. And on special occasion, you used to get the soft bun, yeah. And the cherry malt, yeah, in the box. And the chocolate milk in the box. Authentic Jamaican, if you have partied in something like that. If you never mash up a jackass can, I am sorry. If you never mash up a buster, I'm mean, gonna talk about the soft drink. Because no one don't even know what a buster is. I want to say when it's Jamaica. If you is not a Jamaican, you don't know what a buster is. Hush. Osh, Osh, me I tell you from now, the nicest thing ever to be made and wrapped up in a piece of tangle paper, wax paper. Yeah, you understand me? I say that wax paper is sweet today, that coconut something them greater and mixed with the sugar. You understand? If you don't know what a buster is, if you never eat a buster till you have to use all your finger, finger nail and try to dig out the buster from out of your teeth and dig out the little part there. If you never eat a buster, sweetie, and after you eat a buster, sweetie, and you did it, all you eat it all 9 o'clock in the morning and all 5 o'clock in the night when you had chat, one little piece of buster does this large out your teeth, you just feel like a sweetness I run up and down in your mouth. You is not a real Jamaica. I am sorry, you is not a real Jamaican. I am so sorry. 
You understand me? I say you don't have the authentic, hardcore Jamaican feeling there. You understand me? I say I am sorry. You understand me? I say me not disrespect nobody. I mean, nobody feel less than. But there are certain things that are quintessential to the struggle, and and the struggle is what make us who we are. And if you never embark or embrace any of the struggle we face growing up as a Jamaican. There are certain things that you really and truly cannot appreciate and there are certain things that people do or say that you might think are being our overreactions but is a part of the struggle that is embedded in us that make us truly Jamaican and make us passionate towards our countrymen to ensure say we look out for them best interests. You understand me I say? So I now violate nobody, I don't nobody feel no way. If you never name a police button, if you don't know what a police button is, if you don't know what a police button is, I'm not talking about the police uniform. If you do not know what a police button is, you is not a Jamaican. If you never eat something where you choke little bit in your hand and you lick it off, and if you near me too fast, you choke. You don't know, you're not a Jamaican. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's something you chew it in your hand and you have to lick it to eat it. And if you said something put too much in your mouth one time, I was if you got chat, you must choke somebody if you come knock your back. If you don't know what that is, you are not a Jamaican. I am so sorry, my most humble apologies. You understand? <laughs> my most humble apologies. If you do see somebody say, Asham, Asham. Baba, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I say. If you don't know what them is, unfortunately, you are not truly a Jamaican. And for, and I do say, unfortunately, you understand because for your childhood gone. If you don't know them, something there. If you never used to wait till the mama gone a bit and teeth out the Milo and put liquor in your hand, miggle. Yeah, you could cause them and lick out the mile out of your hand niggle. If you never used to eat milk powder out of your hand niggle, you is not a real Jamaican. I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. You understand? May I tell you this? If you don't know them something, there, you is not a if you never yeah, some people say, I know Milo and last call one. Alex. If your mother never put like a Alex in your hand when she mixed the tea and you have to lick it out of your hand niggle, you is not truly a Jamaican. See? If your cousin them, me attack the town people, they might not know this, but the man them with their country. If somebody never take the seed of a fruit, the seed, and rub it on the ground till it hot, and touch upon your skin and burn you with it. <laughs> oh, God, oi, oi. If nobody never take a donkey eye, and rub the donkey eye on ground, and put it on your skin, and put it on your skin, and burn you with it, you is not. A real royal Jamaican. Mm -hmm. May I tell you that straight? May I tell you that straight? If you don't know what a thinking to is, I'm not talking about what is in her shoes. If you don't know what a thinking to is, hush, hush, you look a bit too urban for me. May I tell you the truth? May I tell you the truth? If, if them never take a box through, if you are your cousin them, or you are your friend them, where you grow with, never take a box through box. And stuff it with party bag, newspaper, all different type of rubbish. You understand? All different type of rubbish. Stuff the box juice box. Use the box juice box. And beat down the corner of them on the ground. Beat down the, 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 the sharp part of them on the ground. And somebody fling it off of you. And you duck from it. You are not a Jamaican. Where do you come from? Town. Or where you come from country, where you come from Westmoreland, or where you come from Portland. If somebody never stuff a box juice box and fling it off of you yet, you is not a Jamaican. Me I tell you that straight. When a boy, when a girl, me no business what you want to say. Someone gonna say, oh right, they never used to play that. Everybody in a Jamaica, if somebody never fling a box juice box off of you, if them before the game start, nobody never say, cock up is a 10 and tips. Is a oath, Jesus Christ. You is not a Jamaican. May I tell you this? If you never got a country, pump bad, the real thing there. If you never got a country for the summer, if you never got a country, go spend a summer holiday. You is not a real Jamaican. If you never got a country, if you never got a country, go spend a summer yet. You is not a real Jamaican. If you are a little cousin, them never play mad mama and papa. If you and your little cousin them never play Dali Oz. If you never play Dali Oz, you is not a real Jamaican. I am telling you this. If you never, if you never, 
used to fight your little cousin them. I talk about fight like brutalized. Like if I talk about run them down. I talk about wrestle them around and fight them. For the Easter bun box. If you never fight your cousin them. For the Easter bun box. You is not a real Jamaican as a man. If you grow as a Jamaican man. And you are none of your cousin them. Never fight for your Easter bun box. If you and none of your cousin them never fight, me not talk about for the bun, you know. I not, not even talk about where you're going to use it, you know. If you and your little cousin them never fight, you understand? For the Easter bun box. If you never fight your little cousin them for the Easter bun box when Easter come, you understand? You is not a real Jamaican. No for them attack on this thing, don't even know what the bun box for. No for them a chat, them don't even know what is the purpose of the book the bun box come talk to me who can tell me what is the purpose of the bun box what was the bun box for why were we fighting for the bun box why were we fighting for the bun box jesus christ <laughs> why were we fighting for the bun box jesus oh i'm mean, not telling like yo Yo, I'm not telling like as a child, I have a, I have a wonderful child. Great. Yo, Jesus Christ, man. Somebody make chuck. Make chuck. You understand? Trailer. Because you can't make a real trailer without a bun box. And Easter morning, everybody, everybody supposed to line out. Be a chuck. Be a chuck line out. You understand? Be a chuck line out. Be a chuck line out. Jesus Christ, man. Oi. There are only people things that, 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 that make that are synonymous to, 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 to Jamaican culture that made us who we are. You understand? See, the generation that we grew up in is the last of that generation. If you're if you're in your late 20s, early 30s, you know, you are the last part of that generation they in a right you now. You understand? You are the last part of the marble playing generation, the boom pan wall last skip generation, the Chinese skip. You remember Chinese skip? We have to make X and diamond. Uh, uh, you start an ankle, then you go, then you go knee, then you go, go waist, then you go, 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 no, you go tie, then you go waist, then you go underarm, then you go neck, then you, then, then you go overhead. Jesus Christ, man. You remember them something? That? No, my gosh, man. I'm not telling you, people. No, for the man, them pan this right you now. I tell you this. If you never. And this is something I'm going to say right now. Enough man, I'm going to take the, the man that I come from town, the barn and grow at town, they going to take offense to this. But if you never take a coconut tree limb, if you never take the limb of a coconut tree and take your grandfather or your uncle him cutlass and use the, tree, the coconut bunker and shave it up and make a cricket bat and then left it in the, in the, in the, in the sun for soak for it hard. If you never make a cricket bat out of a coconut bunker, if you never make a cricket bat <laughs> out of a coconut tree limb, I am so sorry for you. You understand me? I say, I am so sorry for you. The people who were born in the 80s and the people who were born in the early part of the 90s are the last part I to get. The last part I we get. You understand me, I say? The last part of the good child, you know, I say childhood because they nowadays people are say why. But the last part of the good childhood, they want to get me, I tell you though. You understand? If you never born in them part, I am so sorry. You understand me, I say? I am so sorry. But me, I tell you, those type of liberty taught us a sense of camaraderie. Them ramping, you used to do, you know, notice all of them things that we used to play, we used to play with each other it used to be communal playing where you play where the people pick them in your yard play with the pick them from over the next yard we play with the pick them from the next yard and anything there so, so certain social skills or certain social et etiquette that we have or that we have today those stuff those things are, are, are those games that we used to play as children those are the things that instilled all of those rationals and, and, and instill all of those morals and all of those social cues, we got them from the benefit of from playing those games. 
You understand? From those social interactions that we had as a child. You understand? We look, we took a lot of those things for granted as those or us ramping. But those are the things that molded us into knowing how to, to wait our turn. How to be respectful of each other. How to be resourceful. Problem solving skills. You understand? All of them something. There. You understand what we used to do? It used to own us and mold us in the individuals that we are today. You understand? The reason why we accept pressure and we take, we, we, we know run and shy away from pressure and problem and hardship is because we grew up or we were indoctrinated or we were molded into adults who know how to deal with adverse situations. And I am, I, I am very, like, the way I see children are growing today, even my own opinion, I am scared for them. I am scared for them because a lot of the things that we took for granted as children, they don't have those experiences. They don't even have similar experiences like to that. Most of our children nowadays are growing nomadically. Most of our children nowadays are growing nomadically. Children nowadays do not play outside anymore like that. Rare you find children who play outside. Most children, their best friend right now is a tablet. Are them in a little chat room where they might play upon the, upon the, upon the video game them and them something that are the, the most interaction them have when they might play Minecraft or one of them something where they might interact via the headphone where they might use upon the TV for play the game. If me and this is something I have to talk right now, if you never buck off your big toe yet, if you never ever buck off your big toe yet, your childhood is boring. If you never book your big toe, you never have a good childhood. I'm going to tell you that straight. Who wants vex vex? If you never run barefoot and buck off your big toe, your childhood boring. I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you that. If you never buck off your big toe, growing up in a Jamaica, you're not, you, you, never, you, you never have a good childhood. I'm going to tell you that. Your childhood is boring, your childhood is lame. You never used to have fun, you never used to ramp. You understand? Zin, when people are kidnapped them, people are kidnapped people from when we are picnic. You think I know people start kidnap people? First of all, it's harder to kidnap somebody now than, than back in the days. Back in the days, kidnapping was something we did much, much easier. The only reason why we never did know about kidnapping is because we never really have the access to information as we do now. Things weren't circulating as much. So sometimes people miss now, nobody not even know about it. Sometimes not even the, the proper authorities never get wind of it. You understand me? I say, so it never come on TV. We never have no phone feed circulating on a WhatsApp group. So somebody get kidnapped and all them something. There. You understand? Whatever is happening now, the negatives of society are amplified by the access to information or the really already available information is. You understand me? I say, Zin, a data go on right now. Zin, when people are talking about say things are going as are how it how bad it is. No. I honestly do not believe that life is any much worse than it was from before. You understand? Grant you, grant you, criminality is on a rise in a Jamaica. I mean, I'm gonna tell you like criminal criminality is at an all-time high. But the same heinous acts are being um, committed as were before. You understand? Zin? The murder rate has skyrocketed. But I don't think that the abuse against children or violence against children is getting any graver than it was before. I honestly don't think so. If the statistics are there to prove me wrong, I am open to be proven wrong. Nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is this. We are not communal people anymore as a society. And that is one of the reasons why we are, we are filled with so much hate and angst towards our neighbors and our fellow Jamaican. Growing up, may I tell you this shit. Growing up, when I was growing up, I used to know everybody who lived on the road. I grew up in a district, um, Bambury district over Victoria in Alinstead. I used to know everybody from top Bambury go straight to bottom Bambury. Every single body. I know everybody did know everybody. Everybody did know who for Pitney that. Everybody did know who for niece that. Who for woman that. Who for brother that. Who for cousin that. Who they are foreign for who. Who come from foreign. Everybody knew everybody. I saw the community this day. I live on a road right now. I live on me, me not even talk about my community. I talk about the road where I live on my scheme. I don't know. Me, me can count for my hand how much people I know will live on the road in my scheme at this present moment. 
and the road that I live in by my scheme is a very active road very very active road because they have whatsapp group and all them something every every end of month them keep um black meeting and all them something i'm mean, still not know the people them because a lot of the times i might fall still because a lot of the time when the black meet them i keep me not get for go cars me there on the road me there work or whatever but I'm going to the whatsapp group sometimes i see some people picture i see all oh, them people them people live from the road i know them people and that is what is happening in this society today where we don't even know we neighbors them. A lot of people live at some place where you don't even know the person who lives next door to you. You don't even know who it is that lives next door to you. Because most people from them got them yard, the only energy they have to do is just bathe and probably sweep out your house or do little chores you have and then go lie down, watch the Netflix and go sleep. If you have your picnic, you help your picnic with them little homework and you go sleep. Someone would not even do that. Someone would not even have fat pump in those sets. I reach home, carry little food, fling it down, say, eat that. We go bed and we go sleep. Whenever we pick and drop asleep, them drop asleep. We don't even. I don't talk right now. You understand? So, it's like everybody living in them own a little cave. There's no community, anyways. We're going back to this nomadic type style of living. Worse, we do are going with coronavirus right now where people are trying to best with social distance and now co mingle and intermingle. There's no sense of community anymore like that, and it's only going to get worse. And with this, we are going when we are grow up, we used to grow and listen in our little community where we grow. It used to be, I am my brother's keeper. If something happened to my brother, I'm out there, I look out for him. If something happened to me, to me, to me, to me neighbor, I look out for him. If somebody, something happened to the person up the road, we look out for them things. So each one help on everybody in the community used to say and ensure say every other person in the community is taken care of. With the work going on in society right now, it's every man for himself. Nobody no business about nobody. When a day like today, when the lockdown are going on, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but there are several churches and several non-government organization who feed the homeless people on a day like today when it's Sunday. Feed the homeless people them. Downtown, Half a Tree, Waterfront, Maypen, Linstead, Clarendon, every township of these churches and of these non-government organizations who do charitable work who feed the homeless people and the disenfranchised of our country. Because of the no movement day today, these people have not been fed. A lot of these people have not been fed. A lot of these people, this is the highlight of their week when they get to interact with people who actually care and go out there to feed them. A lot of them, they get by by odd jobs and doing whatever they do and scrape and forage to feed themselves during the week. But on a Sunday, they can look forward to a warm, cooked meal that is, that is prepared for them. Not what left, not garbage, not something that is fast and, and, and cheap. They look forward to them rice and peas and them piece of fried chicken with them little curry this or them little gravy and them something and them get something for drink and eat something substantial for and put in them stomach. This is something that they look forward to each week. This is the highlight of their week each week. Now a lot of people look at these things. A lot of people look at these things and, and see it as something that is so insufficient and, and something that is so disposable or something that is, is frivolous and you just overlook these things and say, oh, I just one day them now I get no Sunday dinner and nothing that. But for persons who are downtrotted, persons who, who, who have the, the, the whole entire burdens of the world, and them and themselves right now them can't do nothing for themselves or this are the only thing they have to look forward this is something this is probably the, the, the tethering thread that is allowing them to hold on to them sanity to hold on to their own personal humanity and when that is severed away from them without any form of thought or any form of of indignation if you say all right boom what are we going to do to to compensate or, or, or to offset these people when there is no provision that is made for these people what, what what is there my fridge full of food you know people my fridge full of food my cupboard them full of food a day before yesterday my dash was almost a full flat of egg I my house from when I became up and down on the road and my son now my son they are, they are the sitter overnight now and them something I na really get up to make breakfast for him like that a morning time. Me na eat breakfast any at all like that. So I have a whole flat of egg with me. I have a rat me have a dash with. 
and me look at my gut to me say all my son snap them and me get a honey bun and them thing there. Much of them mildew up me have to dash them when all them thing there. My son have cereal and my yard, cereal from top of cereal, we steal them and have to dash around them thing there. So I look for them, something, them, something they have seen. I told them they have my yard and just a dash for things. I go through, go through, come there, a long time, I have my yard. And wake up and can just look what I go on in my yard. I'm glad, I'm grateful for it. You understand? So I look at me, I look at me, and, and I they look at me, I look at me and see the amount of food and things that I dash with in my yard. And I start thinking about it. Say. Look how much me having an excess when I can all dash with. And I dash with and it not coming like nothing to me. And yet still people out there when need the things that I dash with, people out there literally need them. I don't talk about wanting, you know. I don't talk about needing. I go through my cupboard today and I take down how much. When they sit in the name again, apple, apple sauce. You know, the apple sauce that I come in the tin. How much bushes be bean and 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 jolly green giant and some sweet can where the thing them all end up rusty when we get in some barrel from a long time I in my cupboard and I'm under me under my sink and them thing they all eat a thin food and them something they take and dash right today because they all expire some green peas and them sit there how much things are here one bag of some mackerel with some England mackerel you know long when I get a barrel from England me I get a barrel from England in over over six years now I'm fine, I'm fine for tin mackerel from England. Come on, if you know England tin mackerel, the mackerel them have on scale upon them. So, me, me, like my mother, mommy, no disrespect, no violate, be grateful for when they just send them car. When, when me that suffer certain way, when things did harder, them, uh, them used to help me survive. Me used to scale the mackerel them and fry them up. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And them used to help me survive, but them in my cupboard until the tin them rusty. And I dash me up for dash them today. And I look for them and I say, yo, John Oster, look how much people have here. Run go supermarket and spend them last to buy this and buy that. The price of bread gone up to almost $500 a, a bread, a loaf and them thing. Everything gone up and them thing, I have a dash way. I'll flow my dash way this morning, having weevil and all them thing. You understand? And I look at me and say, look how much things I up a dash from my yard. And how much people out the road when need it. So I personally can't sit down and just shut my mouth and just say, yo, boy. You know, say me have it and me alright or things good for me, so I don't have to even worry about them things. And Ray, I can't just sit down and just comfortably go to bed at night time or just see them things I'm doing. Me and myself, me wrong. Because them things are things that I should have packed up and give it before they even expire. If I know I don't need them, I should have given them enough time. I do give away, I'm not going to lie. And I don't need to publicize whatever charitable efforts I do because I, I just don't think it's right to pub for, for, for me. If you want to do it and you do it, fine. You understand? But for me, it's not something that I choose to do to, 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 to go out there and to broadcast whatever charitable effort. Make it seem like I'm only doing it for the clout or whatever. I don't. I feel like I can, you can work in silence, especially when I do charity. You understand? When I look, I'm going to see what me having an excess. I'm going to think about the people, them, like the street people, them, we're out there hungry. Because I go up on the road today, as I tell them, even though I know movement, I go up on the road. So I pass people downtown, and I see the street people, them, huddled up right in front of the courthouse. And when I see the people, them, huddled up there, I say, I wonder to myself, why the, why the whole of the people, them, come here so? But then I remember, say, the time when I passed them down there, that would have been the time when the people them would have come to come feed them. And the people them are not there to feed them because today is a known movement day. And obviously, the people who would have normally come to feed them did not get an exemption from the powers that be to go and feed these homeless people. So these persons who are on the streets every day unable to social distance and unable to stay at them yard because they don't have a yard most of them unable to wear a mask because they don't have a mask they don't sanitize the car you know, make no sense them sanitize car ground them asleep anyway these are the people who are feeling the blunt of it these are the people who have been overlooked these are part of another faction of Jamaica that have been fall into the oversight of the consequences and repercussions of what is going on right now now do not get me wrong I agree I don't know when of time I come I know like sexy sexy Lisa that is true that's true for true 
Zin? But when we look for what going on right now, I agree with the government. 